So you're wondering why your home is not selling. Does it continue just to sit on the market? You're gonna to wanna to stick around as we dive into some key factors that might be giving you some clues on why your home is not selling. Let's get started. What's up YouTubers? My name is Caleb Boaster and I'm a realtor with Keller Williams Dime Partners here in Olathe, Kansas. Let's get to it. When I put a house on the market, I will assist you in resolving any issues that might be preventing your home from selling. Our major objective is to make the deal go smoothly, making your home appealing to potential buyers, both in marketing and materials. It should be the first step in this process. Being impressed by photos only to be let down by the reality might turn a prospective buyer off more than anything else. Sometimes a property remains on the market for an extended period of time, despite all attempts. It gets more difficult to sell it for the fair market value the longer it sits on the market. Hmm, why do you think that is? Well, due to the fact that buyers often feel there's a problem with the home that has been sitting on the market for far too long, leading them to go elsewhere. Well, what then can we do? Let's go over a few lists step by step. Pricing. Pricing is frequently the biggest issue here. Buyers will choose a more affordable option if your property's price is too high. They might find something with a better value and a better property. You can review the comparable sales that have recently taken place in your neighborhood while working with your realtor. If nothing has recently sold in the area, identify previous sales and prorate based on the market's traction at the time. If your property is a 1998 two-story, comparing it to a 2007 two-story sold in the next community won't help you when you are evaluating your property because that's not a good comparison. Examining your market materials, including photos and virtual tours with an objective buy. They are representatives of your property. More prospective buyers will be drawn to your property if you use high quality materials. Now, the property's likability is greatly influenced by the first impression. Often when a house is small and empty, the buyer is unable to envision how the areas may be used. When a home is vacant, it is always better to stage it and add furnishings to increase the likelihood that the potential buyers will be able to enjoy it. They'll be able to picture the various rooms in the house and their possibilities thanks to the staging. Now, first impressions are very important and they begin at the curb. The property should look well taken care of with a maintained yard. Raking the leaves is a good idea if it's fall. If it's winter, make sure the driveway is clear of snow and salt the property along with the steps. When scheduling a viewing in the winter, the front porch lights are left on to provide comfort for the prospective buyers and their agent. Maintain a comfortable temperature when leaving your property. The likelihood that a comfortable buyer will fall in love with your property as a result of their increased time spent there. Keep the air conditioning running during the hottest part of the summer to maintain a cozy and pleasant inside temperature. It is in your best interest as a seller to make the buyer feel at ease so they can spend time inside the home rather than coming and going quickly. Now, the longer they stay on the property, the more likely it is they will feel the same way that you do. Make sure the furnace and heating are functioning during the winter and that the temperature is kept at an acceptable level for potential buyers. Let's take a closer look at the property again. Is there anything out of place? No matter how minor, that should be fixed. Keep in mind that buyers are more drawn to your well-kept property. I'm not saying you have to fix it, but it's better that you do. Examine any things that are missing, broken, not working, or need cleaned. If it's easy and cheap to replace, I would definitely consider replacing it, fixing it, and cleaning it. Whatever the size, you should consider fixing. Never give the buyer the idea that this property is not well maintained. Try to imagine yourself as a potential buyer. If you notice little issues that need to be fixed, you might conclude that there are bigger problems hidden inside the walls or in the attic that were neglected and you might miss out on the opportunity. By being objective when considering these arguments, I'm very confident that you will find success and a smooth selling experience. If you found this video helpful, please like, subscribe, and hit that bell to see my latest video. Tell your friends, family, and coworkers about it in case any of them are looking to sell. Give me a call if they are. I'm confident you have the best real estate experience. Until next time, take care and God bless.